The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with another Pulse School episode. And I have here with me Dan Packer, who is a senior brand manager with Herbicides at BASF. How is it going today? It's going great. Oh, that's awesome. So we are here today to talk about herbicide staging. Um, we are going to look at if we're first here in a field of peas, and then we're going to head to a field of lentils to talk about what sorts of stages you're going to be looking at and what sort of considerations you're going to have with spraying right now. Dan, what can you tell me about that? Yeah, so uh, you really have to get out in a field uh, to get staging on, on peas right. Um, they can be anywhere from two inches high to six inches high or 10 inches high when it's time to spray. So it's really important to get out and count those nodes, uh, looking at the above ground nodes uh, in particular. So most of your pulse herbicides need to be sprayed anywhere from one to six nodes. So you're gonna pull the plant out, look at the, uh, the scale nodes. The two scale nodes are usually either at or just below the surface. And then you begin counting at any of the unfolded leaves above those two scale nodes. So what other sorts of considerations are we looking at? You know, this year we had some frost. Uh, how, does, how does that impact growth and staging for your herbicides? Absolutely. So in a scenario where you get frost, often peas, peas are fairly resilient when it comes to frost. They can regrow from those scale nodes. So in a situation where you have two new shoots gr growing from the same seed out of those scale nodes, you're going to count uh, all the nodes above ground on each of those shoots as one. So if you have two nodes, on two new shoots that are coming from the same plant, that counts as four nodes. So you don't count the scale nodes. So there's always two scale nodes. Uh, you don't count those and then it's the first uh, leaf node that, uh, that you'll see above the ground. So you're limited around timing with, uh, with most, most of your P in crop herbicides. So Odyssey, you have a bit of a range, one to six node stage. Um, with Viper, it's a little narrower window. So three to six nodes. So you're gonna wanna wait until after the herbicides had time to work. Some of those group two herbicides can take uh, you know, about two weeks before you see symptoms. And so waiting, uh, seeing if you're seeing that uh, plant, that um, group two symptomology on the weeds uh, before pulling the trigger on, on respraying, uh, a second flush is always a good option. So if you need to respray after your, uh, your main in-crop application in pulse, in, in peas rather, um, you've got a couple options. So you have a lot of germinicide options. There's many out there. I'm not gonna name them all. And you can spray them right up until flowering. So waiting a couple weeks, uh, for that in-crop herbicide to work to see if you need to respray or if there's a second flush coming. And then you have right up until the start of flowering. So you shouldn't be applying any herbicides once flowering has begun in peas. And, uh, and that goes for graminicides as well as the broadleaf products like Bassagran. Uh, if you have broadleaf weed escapes, it's the same thing. So Bassagran can be applied right up until flowering. You don't want to be getting into that flowering period or you're going to end up losing, uh, losing those flowers that you put the herbicide on. Okay, so we know that these windows exist and that we have to be spraying within these windows, but the question really is, I guess, why? You know, what sorts of things can happen if we're not following these guidelines? Absolutely, so part of it is around when the weeds are germinating and, and critical weed-free period. I think a lot of people are very familiar with the, the critical weed-free period in, in most of the pulse crops. And the other is the tolerance. So peas have natural tolerance to all the herbicides that are registered. There's no, uh, no traded tolerance in peas. And so it's really important to be applying those group two herbicides like Odyssey and Viper prior to the sixth node so that you don't see injury. So once you get beyond that, you start to see injury. The peas have to metabolize that herbicide. And so it's important to stay with that in that window to ensure crop safety. So on any, on any of those respray products for a second flush or, or any weed escapes from your, your main in crop, you wanna make sure you're applying prior to flowering. So uh, peas have tolerance to, uh, to the graminicides or bassagran right up until flowering. It's also important not to mix those two. Uh, so we, we do see a drop off in efficacy sometimes when you're mixing a graminicide with bassagran, applying, uh, you know, scouting your field and looking for either grassy weed escapes or broadleaf weed escapes is really important and applying them separately will, uh, will get you the best results. Absolutely. So the group two products in peas, so Odyssey for example, uh, being the main group two product uh, in peas, you'll see efficacy within a week to 14 days. You don't wanna jump the gun and respray within a week. You wanna wait at least two weeks and, and you'll begin to see that standard group two symptomology. So yellowing of the growing point, that kind of thing. 
With Viper, it has a group six and a group two. So you'll, you'll actually see efficacy a little bit earlier because the group six works a little faster than the group two. But the same goes uh, with waiting at least two weeks before you decide if that herbicide's working in the field. Okay, so now we have moved over to a lentil field. As we know, this is a pulse school episode, but that does not mean that all pulses are the same. And lentils have some different considerations compared to field peas. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'll probably clarify, we're in a clear field lentil field. So we're talking about clear field herbicides today. Uh, most of the lentils are clear field out there. Um, and, uh, and there are some differences. So uh, the, the main difference between peas and clear field lentils is that peas, um, peas have a, a natural tolerance to the group two chemistry. The clear field trait gives lentils um, a, uh, a traded tolerance to the, to the group two chemistries in uh, Solo and Odyssey. So, what you get with, um, with that is a little bit wider window of application. So in, uh, in peas, we talked about not applying those group two products past the sixth node. In lentils, you can go right up to the ninth uh, node with the, uh, the group two product. So you have a little wider window of application, which may give you a little bit of flexibility to wait for rains or winds or, or whatever may happen out in the field. And, uh, but the same, the same staging guidelines apply. So you're looking uh, pulling up plants, again, not staging from the road because lentils are, are pretty short. I don't think you can count nodes from the road. Um, pulling up plants, looking at those two below ground scale nodes or, or sometimes right at the soil surface, and then counting above those first two scale nodes that you see on the stem. Uh, a node on lentils is anytime you have a branch coming out and, uh, and that's how you'd count. So this lentil that I'm holding right now is at five nodes. Uh, so right in the middle of that window, but still lots of time to spray. So in, in field peas, you're, you're very limited in terms of not applying group two products past that six node or you'll see more injury. Like I mentioned, the, the clear field lentils do have tolerance to the, uh, the IMI chemistry, the group two chemistry, and that allows them to metabolize uh, that, that uh, imazimox based chemistry very well. So you end up with uh, enhanced tolerance to, to a wider stage. So you can go right up to the ninth node without dealing with any tolerance concerns. Okay, so we talked about peas and the critical weed free period. Now lentils are not very competitive. Do you wanna talk a bit about that? Well, I think we all know lentils as, uh, as being a very uncompetitive crop. So, you know, there's a lot of things you do before you get to your in crop to manage weeds and lentils. So uh, there's, you know, pre or post harvest applications, there's pre-seed applications. There's a few things you could have done prior to the in crop application to get the best weed control. Um, because you are limited with what you have. So you, you really only have two options in lentils, Solo and Odyssey um, in Clearfield lentils for the um, in-crop timing. And, uh, and there isn't as many broadleaf uh, respray options as well. So uh, if you have grassy weed escapes, you have lots of options of graminicides you can use and you can use them right up into flowering. So very similar to peas, wide window of application to, uh, to get some grassy escapes if there's a second flush. Got some rain out here. I expect there'll be uh, more than one flush of wild oats coming. And, uh, and uh, you don't have that luxury with the broadleaves. So it's really important to make sure you're doing all those things up front that can help your, uh, your lentil crop uh, remain weed free. And, uh, and then getting that staging right when the weeds are out of the ground within that one to nine node stage. So in, in uh, clear field lentils, you don't really have any broadleaf uh, respray options uh, once you get beyond that nine node stage. So um, it's really important to, to do those couple steps up front that I mentioned. You do have the option to, to respray for grass escapes um, or second flushes of grasses right up until flowering. So you do have some time uh, to wait for those herbicides to work uh, before you make that decision. <music> 